What's up everyone, I've got a real business story with Brett Cosby of PeerStreet.com. You actually use the software that he sold to Google, which is Google Analytics. And in this real business story, we're gonna learn three things. Number one, how the heck did he actually figure out how to make a business work? He pivoted a bunch of times. Number two, how the company almost failed because of September 11th, it's pretty crazy. And number three, how they ended up using the fishing boat strategy and how that helped them grow and eventually sell that company to Google. He's the founder of PeerStreet.com. I love that site, it's for real estate investing. Definitely check that out and enjoy this real business story. Out of college, I helped start Urchin Software Corporation. Early in the web analytics space, it was me, my brother, a guy who grew up across the street from us, and then this other co-founder of ours, Jack Ancone, who was a buddy of mine from USC. And we had built Urchin as an internal tool because like bandwidth is, was expensive back then, and we were like, hey, we have all this log file data, we should process it and say like, just give people a sense of like, hey, your bill is gonna look roughly like this. It was sort of like cell phone minutes now where for a while people, you know oh, what I mean? Interesting. Like yeah, it yeah. actually mattered to people. Why did you believe that Urchin would be the future? You know, we started to get a lot of signals from the market that it was important. My wife now, my girlfriend at the time, worked at an agency up here in LA. She was saying, hey, we, we have the Honda account. We're, we're six months behind on web, website traffic. And meanwhile, like Honda's spending millions of dollars in like banner ads and all this stuff. They have no idea how it's doing. There's no like, moving money based on yeah. performance. It was like really bad. So she's like, hey, if you could actually do better than this, it would be really helpful to us and potentially a big business opportunity for you guys. Meanwhile, I was like emailing Earthlink. Hey, we've got this thing, you know, this log file analysis software, you should check it out. And I, I literally took the same email and four times I pasted it into their web form. After the fourth time I sent it, the exact guy in the data center wrote me back and he's like, send me a, a demo and a white paper. Yeah, like a white paper, what's that? Like the white pages? Like what's he? <laughs> so, but we figured it out, met with them and then uh, Earthlink became one of our kind of first really big customers. So that it was that and then we got like cable and wireless, which is like our first million dollar deal. At Urchin we were going after what we call the fishing boat strategy where instead of going for individual customers, fishing for individual customers, who had websites, okay. which was hard and took a long time, and our product didn't cost that much, so it wasn't that that cost effective to do it. We'd go after hosting companies, which were like the fishing boats who had already caught all the fish, right? Smart. And we're like, we're like, hey, we'll provide this to all your fish. What, what yeah. were some of the things that weren't working during that time, or what were some of the struggles? Well, the so this is the thing: it was a feast and famine business model, so it's really hard to scale that business because we would go after these big contracts, and like one time we had Windstar, we were working on this huge contract, they had a blimp literally going over our house while we were negotiating the contract, it was crazy. The next thing that happened is we were funding that company. We were about to, uh, about to close a big round. The guy, one of the guys flew out from Boston with a check. We were supposed to meet on the morning of September 11th. Wow. And my co-founder called me, Jack calls me and he says, dude, turn on the TV. Yeah. And so I'm like, what, what do you think this means? Are we still meeting? He's like, dude, there's no way we're meeting. Like we're under attack, like whatever. So we ended up talking to the guy and he's like, I'm on my next flight back, the deal's off. When everyone was throwing money at ads and like eyeballs on banner ads, people didn't really care about analytics and like, how is it all, like what are the metrics? Is it actually driving visitors that are converting to customers, et cetera? Okay. Post 9-11, that all changed. All the ad budgets dried up. People only wanted to spend on stuff that actually was driving oh, conversions. How do they know? They use, right. they use Urchin to find out. So all of a sudden, people cared. The second thing is we completely streamlined our business model. And so these 30 page agreements that we would negotiate with these uh, data centers turned into a single sheet of paper front and back. We just hacked out all this like legalese that was in there and we're like, we don't need this, we don't need this, we don't care about that, let's give on this point. We aligned our business models with our customers' business models, for example. I think that's big. We cut out a lot of the red tape, we took out all the negotiation up front, we gave on a whole bunch of points so that it was easy for them to implement. When Google finally acquired us, they were like, no, it's because so many of our customers who are like uh, buying, you know, ad buyers uh, on Google were using Urchin to decide if they should buy more ads. Uh, so it was like, you guys were disintermediating, disintermediating us. So it was like 15% of their advertisers or something, like a huge number. Wow. So it was almost like too dangerous for them not to have some third party kind of telling their customers where to advertise. Our biggest competitors at the time with Google Analytics would say, yeah, but it's a free tool. Sure, you have some, like most of the same features, but unless you have professional services, uh, would you get with us? And like, and so we did a switcheroo where we said, yeah, that's right. The tools are the same. With them, you're paying for the tool and professional services. Here you get the tool free. And so save all your money for the professional services and you'll get a lot more. What that did is all the third party service providers who had been armchair quarterbacking the industry the whole time, like who's gonna win, which who should you go with? I don't know, I like these guys, I like these guys. Galvanize all of them to our side. 
So they told all their customers, yeah, go with Google Analytics. Free and then give us the Hire us for professional services. And so that, like, it wasn't until then, like, a lot, I don't think a lot of people recognize this, but like for a while, Google Analytics was like, the industry was trying to push it to be like a blogger tool only, but that switched the whole thing at that moment. And it became like used by, you know, huge. How much of the web uses Google Analytics, do you think? I mean, when I left the team, which is about four years into it, it was like 76% of all, all pages that uh, the bots crawled were tagged with Google Analytics wow, code. Wow, that's crazy. Which is crazy. That's obscene. What was the negotiation on the acquisition? So you're at that search conference. They just come up to you and be like, hey, I want to give you a bunch of money. Is that how it works? Because I've been waiting. Yeah. Like, I, at Sumo, I like, wish it was like is that. that. I just need to go to more conferences. Being that's in the right point. place at the right time, it matters. Timing matters for everything. I would speak on all the panels I could get on. We had our trade show booth. We were doing a launch there with like a new product. And two guys walked up to me at the booth and said, hey, we're um, from Google. We're just interested in what you guys are doing. Like we've heard a lot of good things. And I said, well, look, our whole team of all the right people are here right now for the show. Why don't we do it this week? So we go the next day to Google right before the Google dance. And it's like 20 people in the room, very senior engineers, all these and like corp dev people and all this and that. And I'm like, okay, this is clearly not a biz dev conversation. I could not say a word in that meeting because I was so nervous because I knew really what was at stake and what was really going on. And fortunately, my co-founder who's still, this guy, Paul Murray, who's still there, he gave like one of the best, most calm and kind of cohesive uh, and just clear pitches that I've ever seen him give. And it was just a super straight down the middle story of what we are, size of the company, technology we built, wow. what it does. And basically the whole room's like, sweet. Two weeks later, we said to them, hey, we're gonna run a process. We have other guys trying to acquire us right now, which was true. We need to know if you're in or not. And they were like, yeah, we're in. And like, they were like, but if it leaks, deal's off. And I figured the deal would take like a few months to negotiate and get acquired. So I got engaged and like planned oh, the wedding date. And in, during that process, assuming I'd be like completely married and working at Google by the time I got married, but it actually slipped to like right around my wedding and it almost fell through the cracks. Yeah. How did your life change when that position happened? Moved to San Francisco. All of our employees moved except with, a, with the exception of a couple, which is crazy to think that people have like families and within a week of finding out we're getting acquired by Google, they like pick up and totally. move. Whoa! All right, well that's a wrap. Go give Brett some love at PeerStreet.com. Leave a comment below about who you want me to do a real business story of next. I love seeing your comments. Also, if you like the video, give a thumbs up. We put a lot of work into this. Love you guys. Later.